Well, the spiritual dimension of sustainable development is it's really underlying the whole sustainable development paradigm. It's the basis for action. Every society has, can come up with technical solutions, but um, beneath those technical solutions you have political will, and beneath the political will you have spiritual principles and values that animate people's desire to move forward and create a better world. So from a Baha'i perspective, we, our worldview is such that we, we see the world, the earth really as one country, humankind as citizens. And if we're living on a single planet with finite resources, we really need to live according to the, not only the physical requirements, but the spiritual requirements of community coming together and living in all our diversity as one people. Um, some of the principles that might be derived from that sort of thinking, uh, which we, we think of really as deep spiritual principles, would be things like uh, the equality of, of women and men. And that, that can go deeper. It can be like, it can be applied to education and the importance of educating men and boys about the equality of, of women and men. It's a spiritual principle or a truth or a deep motivating uh, basis for taking action. Um, the elimination of all forms of prejudice. How can we live in a world that's divided by cultural, racial, economic prejudices? To be able to solve the problems that, uh, that the world is confronted with now, we really need to be able to see ourselves uh, and to act as if we are one human family. And the diversity of views is very important. It's like cultural diversity, uh, biological diversity, all of the diversity that we've been gifted with as a species can help us to solve many of the problems that we've got today. Uh, but when one takes a spiritual approach, one looks first at the spiritual principles that underlie the decisions that need to be made. So why would faith communities be involved in something like a summit on sustainable development? Um, it's a good question. And I think the answer lies in the fact that spiritual principles underlie the political motivation to act. Science is telling us very important things about the conditions of the world and what's happening with human pressures on our environment. And also, we know that many people in the world are suffering from underdevelopment and the inability to meet their basic needs. Um, the vast inequities in the world are another issue that faith communities are, should be, and are concerned about. The disparities between the rich and the poor, these are social issues, but they're also spiritual issues. How do we respond to these things? And on what basis? I think our religious teachings are what really motivate us to respond in ways that are enduring, and ways that have a long-term vision for where we're headed as a civilization. Um, it's really important that the spiritual dimensions of sustainable development come out in the, the discussions around Rio, because uh, without that, you've got a purely material approach to solving the problems. And the motivation is just not going to be there. And there are a lot of competing interests and so forth. Um, but we need to recognize that, that human beings are essentially spiritual beings. The vast majority of the world's people have some belief in a greater dimension to life. Uh, and, and most of that comes from religion. And the religions over time have taught that there is a, 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 a big part of life and our purpose in being here relates to our development of our spiritual qualities and capacities yes. and the service that we can bring to humanity in the process of life on this earth is very important and it leads to the advancement of civilization but it also helps us to develop our, our spiritual capacities going forward in, in, in life beyond this, this plane. And I think that's something that um, gives one a great deal of perspective 
on life itself. Um, but it also underlies, in a very practical way, the kind of decisions that we make as a as people on how we're going to leave this planet for future generations and uh, what our moral obligations are and uh, what the right thing is to do. So we're really um, very interested in seeing the discourse on spirituality and values advancing through this process and to work very closely, hand in hand really, with the scientific community so that there's a balanced approach moving forward in solving some of the world's problems and that people really get motivated to, to do the right thing and not just to approach it from a, a material standpoint. There is a group here um, of religious, spiritual, and values-based organizations that have coalesced around two projects. One is an, uh, a treaty, a people's treaty, on ethics and spiritual values. One of several treaties that are being negotiated by civil society, parallel to the process that's going on in the summit. And uh, the other group that's, that's related very closely to that is one that is uh, looking at the uh, ethics and spiritual values that could animate the uh, official negotiating text of the UN. Um, and so the group is looking at how to inject or recommend or suggest language that could be inserted in appropriate places in the official document. The UN has actually acknowledged the spiritual dimension of sustainability in many documents, going all the way back. I have supposed to the UN Charter and, and doc documents like the, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I mean, these summon our, our spiritual values in a, in a direct way. But then agreements that came out of Rio and the Social Summit and uh, other uh, major conferences of the 90s also acknowledged this spiritual component of life. And uh, I think that it's important to recognize that this is not a new um, topic to come into the discourse, but it's one that really still needs to be elevated and it needs to have a, a greater profile and that's what many of us are here working for.